So this is how it all starts. McDonald's march to Harlow and chirpy enough to assume that victory was in the bag. It wasn't. The Battle of Harlow was Scott against Scott, cousin against cousin. Some say it lasted a week, some a day. It makes no odds. It was a disaster of epic brutality. It solved nothing, but the tragedy of it left an indelible mark on the people's consciousness. They remembered it in song and ballad, in March and Pibrach. In 1911, they built a big monument on the site, and after 600 years, they remember it still. In July, on St. James's Even, that four and twenty dismal day, twelve hundred, ten score, and eleven of years in Christ, the sooth to say, men will remember as they may, when thus the verity they know, and money I in may mourn for a, the brim battle of the Harlow. Friday, the 24th of July, 1411. Men have indeed remembered, as they may. For instance, this tune dates from 1625. It was probably used in a dramatic mask telling the story of Harlow for King James the Sixth and First sitting on his regal chair in faraway London and already 200 years distant from the battle itself. That's a measure of how significant it was. Besides this tune, the king might very well have also heard these words. Frey donny dear as I come through, doon by the hill of Banachy, alangst the lands of Geary, great pity was to hear and see. The noise and doosome harmony that ever that dreary day did dull, crying the coronach on he, alas, alas, for the harlow. Crying the coronach on high, the coronach was the funeral dirge. And all for what? A dispute over territory. Pride, possession, dominion, two blood relatives after the same prize, the earldom of Ross. Lord MacDonald of the Isles, a chieftain of aristocratic Gallic lineage and learning from the west of Scotland, and the Earl of Mar, son 